these guys are really good, but there's only one way to get to the PGA Tour and there's only so much room. You know, it's hard because 18 years is a really long time to sustain anything in any community. I just remember, you know, feeling sad. It was always such a fun place to watch golf. Okay, there's gonna be an opening on the calendar now. People are gonna have to find something else to do in July. I don't think anybody will understand what they lost until it's gone. We should have professional golf, and this is as good of quality as professional golf as you can get. And it's just a way for us to add another arrow to our quiver of things that we can say, we do these things in Omaha and we do them really, really well. Hey, tournament's coming back. I need you and I need a couple more good people. Between the staff, the volunteers, we're all getting it done at the same time. It, you know, my job description might be one thing, but if I need to help bail out the toilets, I'll be helping bail out the toilets. You know, that's just kind of what you do. Major chess piece. It's like trying to get an NFL franchise without a stadium. There is something special about this event. There's something special about watching young guys chase their dreams. I would say that we're the only tournament on this tour, or maybe even any tour, that has a female tournament director and a female ops director, um, and both of us in our first years. So, and the first year for the tournament, I'd say the stakes are pretty high. Augusta, Pebble Beach, Omaha. That last location may not jump out to you as iconic, but all three hold a significant place in the landscape of professional golf. For almost two decades, Omaha was an important stop for the PGA Tour and its web.com tour. Casual fans may think of professional golf as only a few major events, but the PGA Tour consists of many events spread across the U.S. each year, including the web.com tour a place where young lions compete, furthering their craft. The web.com tour are the up and coming players on the PGA Tour. A lot of the players spend time, you know, honing their skills, trying to get their card on the web.com tour to get onto the PGA Tour. With the creation of the Cox Classic in the late 1990s, Omaha put itself on the forefront as a place to see tomorrow's stars today, becoming a favorite stop of both tour organizers and players alike. I think it really put us on the map. You know, people don't always think about going to golf in Omaha. They don't realize that Nebraska has very beautiful golf courses and we have a lot of land where we can really show off the state. And so just that recognition and being able to represent our hometown and our state is very cool. Yeah, I think uh, there, was, there was interesting luck advantages. Omaha was really dying for a sporting event, but any event really. Um, to kind of end the summer. The College World Series was kind of what, now the College World Series is in the middle of the summer, but then it was really the start of the summer and, and the Cox Classic finished the summer. It was one of the highest attended events on the tour. The players always felt like it was a PGA Tour experience and that it really helped them get ready to hit the PGA Tour running. The other advantage we had is it was the beginning of the Tiger Woods career. In 1996 was his first pro event. Uh, which I actually was able to go to, which was fun. Over the next two decades, the Cox Classic would become an iconic event on Omaha's summer calendar. By the 2010s, that calendar had become increasingly busy and the competition for entertainment dollars increasingly fierce. In 2013, it was announced the Web.com Tour would not be back the following year and professional golf's 18-year run in Omaha would come to an end. It wasn't a sudden, there had been rumors and there had been rumblings and thoughts and you know for a year, a couple of years. Of course availability was probably the biggest factor. Champions Run was a great host for so many years. Um, great people over there and the membership was so generous. You know they felt like they paid their dues to golf and they felt they paid their dues to events in Omaha. There's a lot of hard work 
and a lot of people that were really connected by it, not just the employees, but all the volunteers that came out and all the sponsors that helped make it a big community event. The Omaha citizens found how much they missed it once it was gone. Something special about this event. Every rebirth begins with a champion. And for bringing professional golf back to Omaha, that champion would be Mike West. Mike's got passion and energy, and he's always got that vision. He always sees a couple train stops ahead while everybody else is still looking at the front of the train. West was quickly alerted that a title sponsor was waiting in the wings to help bring professional golf back to the Cornhusker State. You know, for us, Pinnacle Bank is really about community and about supporting the communities that we live in, we work in. Thousand dollars going to the same charity to put Mark Hawk in this tank. Do oh, I have oh, a oh. There's a little bit of a lull in the events between College World Series time and before Husker football starts back up. So we thought, you know, what could we do to help bring professional golf back to Omaha? With a title sponsor on board, and a strong desire from the Web.com tour to return to Omaha. The Pinnacle Bank Championship now needed to find a home. That's like a three-year story. It's the story that begins with the word no. The PGA had reached out to us, trying to gauge our interest in the event, hosting the event, and, and at that time, I don't, I don't think we were prepared for it. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if we took something like that on, we could, we could manage. There's a lot of challenges when looking for a course. Number one, it is a sacrifice to members. Uh, it's a sacrifice to permanent tea time people at Indian Creek. It's a sacrifice to the owners. You take a chance and you hope that you, you, know, you gain some exposure and people are curious. Plus, you like to put your golf course a little bit on a pedestal. And I think this is a great opportunity to do that. Finally, after a year or two or three of the PGA courting us and us, you know, firing back at them, we came to an agreement and um, here we are. Everyone was glad it was coming back, but especially now being out at the club at Indian Creek was more of a regional and a state event. And it still is, it's the state's, it's Nebraska's only professional golf tournament. With a golf course locked in, a board of directors set, and a title sponsor in place, Mike West's next move would be building the permanent day-to-day -day staff a director of sales, a director of operations, and ultimately, a tournament director. What's amazing to me is that he's extremely loyal, and when he finds people that he really works well with, um, he's really great at putting together a team. I don't know if it has anything to do with me. I think we just got lucky and found three incredible people. You know, it's funny because Jess and I, and Gary too, we all worked with Mike in different scenarios and different stages of his life. You're well rooted in sports personality, shall we say. You mean old? <laughs> Those are your words. Yeah, it's, it's my words. I mean, Gary was the first sports talk show in Omaha, Nebraska. Guys on 590, guys on 1620. You know, they that, that road was paved by Gary Java. I moved here in 1977. I decided at one point, while I was selling restroom supplies and disposable products, I wanted to get back to my journalism roots. I was a communications major from State University of New York at Oswego. Al Roker and I used to drive to our inter internships together in Syracuse. That's where I first got to know Mike West. I joke with people, felt sorry for me and advertised from time to time on my radio show. It's pretty amazing how many people remember that and remember him being on the air and it gives us an advantage. Mike told me I just I want you to know, I've already got the other two people that I want to hire and need to hire, and we can get this done. And so I think that the tour had trust in Mike's ability to put together a team, and I think that lent itself very well to um, the bank's confidence in the team that Mike put together. Well, number one, they're, they're really talented. I mean, that's, that's first and foremost. You have, to, you have to be talented. But they also, with that talent, they brought a lot of experience. I got started with golf um, actually right out of college. I went through one year of the Cox Classic and I fell in love, which is crazy because I had a job of picking up trash, which is everyone's favorite job. You know, being covered in trash juice is always a great experience and way to spend the day when it's 100 degrees out. So I went through um, four years of the Cox Classic. So then I went and worked for 
Bruno event team at the Principal Charity Classic for a few years. I started out working right out of college on the LPGA Tour with ESPN. And then I moved back to Omaha, got a job at Creighton working in the athletic department. Got married and moved to Minnesota where there was a, at the time it was called the Nationwide Tour. So I got a job on the Nationwide Tour event there and Mike West worked at Creighton with me and helped me get that job. I think it was just a matter of we all brought something to the table um, that they they felt was unique. Talent and experience is uh, a lot of times get you get you the job. So. From here on out, Brabeck and Bulos will serve as the primary faces of the Pinnacle Bank Championship. This is apparently promotional materials found in the player and family dining that Jessica was unaware of. Not really sure who produced these, but it's fantastic. We actually have been preparing this event year round. A lot of people don't realize. And then right after the 4th of July, we move our offices to mobile office trailers in the parking lot, which you may notice pulling into Indian Creek. We're actually inside those, working on the golf tournament. So trying to figure out what that looks like. Four handicaps. The duo will be working with sponsors, media outlets, ticketing, overseeing the vending and viewing areas, and managing the paid intern staff as the team elevates the club at Indian Creek to a spectator palace. Advance week is here and the web.com tour is rolling into town. The event right before the tournament we call Advance Week. When you see that tour truck coming into town, it's go time. And you better hope that you have everything ready to go. Building inspectors here. I know, we passed electrical. Dang it! Hey-oh! I wanted to be like, I told James that I could be He texted me. Jake texted me. Dang it! You know, the, the tour trailer's there, the rules officials are there, meaning they're going to be getting the course ready. He's working with the agronomist and working with Jim Nedro and his team to make sure that it's ready for play. Really, that week is a lot of training for the volunteers, making sure they're ready to go if they have to use certain equipment. They're getting trained on how that works. We're making sure that our ticketing equipment's going to work. That's when the leaderboards get pulled off. Hi. So Alexis is working with the tent company to make sure that the we're on schedule. I like to do this on Friday. And that we get, you know, the linens inside of the tents put up. The, the porta potties are gonna be placed on the right day because it's a really fine game of Tetris. So do I still have five and six, which is right here on the end? Still where you were. Five and six. This map is accurate. Everything comes into play. All that planning is really, we get that place that week before, and that's the only chance we have to get ready for the event. Advance week is in full swing. Some two dozen chalets and VIP suites, private viewing boxes for the event, need to be constructed in the next few days. The most significant are on holes 17 and 18. Massive amounts of sponsorship dollars have been invested into these spaces, revenue essential to the event. Historically, Omaha is well known for delivering high levels of hospitality and viewing experiences for sponsors of sporting events. Despite the event being in year one, Expectations are lofty. It's the key element for the Pinnacle Bake Championship to deliver on. And perhaps the worst place for their first mistake. Yeah, well, if that if the, the, if the pin it, placement yeah, goes back far it, left. I do not know of any situation on the chalet. I hope it's something easy and that maybe, and we just need a new generator to make the air conditioner run. Um, you know, if it's, we can always clean up trash, but I hope it's nothing really bad. So the structure that is built on 18 in the fairway, um, it has a pr pretty specific sight line uh, so that the folks that have purchased spots in there can see the 18 green, but can also see the landing area when the players hit off the tee. So um, if that sight line isn't high enough, you can't see anything. So we have to fix it. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. You sure? So I have a, a, a smaller, large-ish 
thing to talk to you about. I need to know from you what it would take to get it three to five feet higher. Oh, wow. Wow. I know it's going to cost me more money, and I'm willing to pay that, because if I have ten people who don't want to come back next year, ten companies that don't want to come back next year because of the viewing, that doesn't help me either. How about high bar stools? You tear the structure down and you start over. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you for smiling, Tom. Uh, Thanks for smiling. Smiling your way through it. Don't come see me anymore. I know, right? <laughs> I used to like to have you come around. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Trying to avoid it as best I can, but. Well, um, now it's better now than Friday. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that went much better than I was anticipating. <laughs> Um, no, I, I appreciate that he's willing to accommodate us because that is not always the way it happens when you work with contractors. So when you find people that are positive and great to work with, that helps. Ask nice, say please, and smile. That's my philosophy. <laughs>For the first time in weeks, Raybeck's workday will come to a close before the sun sets. But Alexis Bulos and a small team of staff and volunteers will have no such luck. Don't grill my fingers. I need those this week. We found, we got the scrap. Oh. <laughs> that, that is, is the, the scrap. scrap. So uh, Molly, our really great volunteer intern, is and, and Hannah are going to um, hold down the fort at the Pro-Am Gala. Ben and I have signs to put up yep. and other nope. operational yeah. duties to get done before the sun goes down. So we've got a team, a crew of volunteers that are ready to hit the golf course and we have work to do. Lots of work to do. One more to go. One more. After nearly two straight weeks of 12 hour days, the team finally has everything in place to launch the Pinnacle Bank Championship. Well, almost everything. There's still one crucial team that needs to arrive before the thousands of golf fans can visit the web.com tour. And you'll find them arriving Monday morning, adorned in baby blue polos. I'm excited to see all the volunteers come out Monday morning. At this point in the game, our staff has been putting in a lot of long hours and it's really nice to have that little boost of energy to just feed off of some of that. Without them, our event would not be a success. So we can't thank the volunteers enough. How are we doing this morning? Shovel guy. We got a breeze, life is good. Yeah. I like it. Our goal is to always have one standard bearer with every group, and you need one walking score to go out with every group every single day. We're very lucky in that we have a lot of volunteers that are actually volunteering multiple days. They're going to be out there all day long and braving the heat with us. Finding 500 people to volunteer during the summer heat is no small task, especially for a golf event that hasn't been held in Nebraska for almost five years. Sometimes, you just have to get creative. Getting a little help from your friends never hurts either. 
Maybe you guys should just volunteer instead. Let's give a big red welcome to former coach, Tom Arnold. So obviously Tom Osborne is like God in the state of Nebraska. Before the tournament, we were trying to find a unique way to remind everyone that the proceeds from the tournament actually benefit Teammates Mentoring Program. Teammates is our charity for this year. Dr. Tom and his wife created the Teammates Foundation when he was still coaching football at the University of Nebraska. He needed, he wanted to find an opportunity to get his players to reach out into the community and um, really make a difference. He was very gracious in helping us too with announcing that Heartland Chevy and Dealers was our presenting partner. And we had him driving around in the Pinnacle Bank Arena in a Chevy truck, always red, and um, announcing at the end that we benefit teammates and that we would like some volunteers. We were very, very fortunate um, and that kind of all came together because Dr. Osborne and at Dinsdale are very close friends. We're trying to raise as much as we can for teammates. Obviously being a first year and dealing with some new expenses, startup costs and things like that, if we could get a $20,000 donation to teammates, that would be wonderful. It was absolutely fun. We were extremely, extremely grateful to have him participate in that in that commercial to bring in volunteers. Well, sound, sound speeding. Camera speeding. Action. Day one of the tournament. We got the Creighton College of Business Pro Am today. It starts here in about an hour and a half. Which way you want it? Angled this way? Yeah. Uh, oh my god. I feel like this is a fire drill right It's chaos. Most folks, when you think of a professional golf tournament, it's Thursday through Sunday. We advertise that our tournament is an entire week. With that, we have some events that are more private and some events that are open to the public. Please, golfers, take your perks on the par four, par five, down the path, drive down the fairway and exit the fairway. A lot of stuff is being set up. Mini golf, a blow up driving range, and a trick shot golfer. The purpose of that is to expand that golf demographic so that everybody who may or may not have ever held a golf club or belongs to a golf club um, can get the opportunity to experience that. Sonic's bringing out slushies. We're just getting ready for tomorrow. We got our Cox Pro-Am tomorrow. It's really awesome to see the web.com tournament come back to Omaha. We were certainly glad to continue our partnership in the form of the Wednesday Pro-Am sponsorship. It's an opportunity to raise charity uh, for great organizations such as teammates that uh, work hard year in and year out for uh, uh, bettering our community. I've been out at Indian Creek and played uh, many times each summer. I can't even believe the transformation that's happened with the course. It's, uh, the fairways are just unbelievable. Our pro, Josh Teeter, was even talking about how wonderful the greens were. So it's really cool to see uh, a hometown course transformed into this pro environment. Today, the Proving Ground begins. players, it's happening on the greens and inside the tee boxes. But for the Pinnacle Bank Championship, it's happening everywhere. Inside the chalets, at the vendor booths, and where it matters most, at the ticket gate. Does professional golf still have a place in Omaha? Or have thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours all been wasted? Soon, everyone will find out. We're trying to really get that general public to come out. I think if we have below 25,000 people, we're going to be really worried. Mother Nature isn't going to take it easy. Omaha is in the midst of its hottest week since 2012. The heat index will cross 110 degrees as the tournament begins. 
with very little relief in sight for the rest of the week. The Pinnacle Bank Championship faces a dual challenge. Getting people to the event and taking care of them once they arrive. Obviously, one of the most important things for us to do is to keep the players and keep the spectators safe. It's hot out, it's summer, summer in Nebraska. We anticipate a certain level of that, but it's hot, 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 hot. We're very worried about the heat. We didn't think it would be this hot. It's, it hasn't been this hot in years. I don't think it's gonna get under 100. We have to kind of go into um, an emergency plan as far as heat and weather is concerned. So we'll start to talk with the sheriff about what that means. So we had a meeting with uh, Lieutenant Reeder, who is our contact at the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. She's delightful. People can bring in empty water bottles, umbrellas to keep them shaded. We're gonna increase the number of water stations that we have on the golf course. I feel bad for the golfers that are out there, but uh, we're actually putting out coolers with ice water and towels. We're you know, putting more Powerade and water at all the tee boxes, that way they can stay hydrated, and their caddies and the volunteers that are walking with them, because they're playing you know, just over a four hour round of golf. We do already a certain amount to take care of the players. They'll be safe and happy, but we want to make sure that the regular spectator that's out here for two or three hours during the week doesn't have heat stroke. Golf course is working together with us to make sure that we increase the number of water stations for the public on the golf course, and we've got a lot of air conditioning running. Anytime that I have a radio interview or a TV interview, I'm really trying to push all those amenities for the general public and say, we're still going to be out here playing golf. We really hope that you come check it out with us. One big problem of heat management seems to be handled. There's no major health issues to this point. But it's the next set of small problems that may put Operations Director Alexis Bulos over the edge. Maybe that's because technically, there are hundreds of them. Alexis, where are you? I mean, I, I don't know why he's confused. Okay. Alexis, what? I think that Alexis is probably going to look at me for a second when I tell her that we have all these bugs that we need to, to suck up and deal with. Christine said that inside the chalet there's a bunch of bugs in the ceiling. Like a gross number of bugs. At night, the lights in the chalets don't go off. They stay on. That's safety. It's also cheaper to not have to install a light switch and have an electrician out here do all that. There's a lot of bugs out here and they all go towards the lights, so. And so we came in the next morning and there are bugs everywhere in the ceiling. In the chalets, which are our highest price hospitality point. Which nobody wants to have a bug <laughs> fall on them or in their food. Uh, they're beetles, so they're shaking it's not gonna do anything, we need a vacuum. They're gonna stick to it. I mean, it's, it's a tent, so right. we can't stop bugs from getting in, but. Right. Hey, Murray, can you figure out what to do about it? Um, once again, it's the Blue Army to the rescue. We've had some great volunteers standing on chairs that are vacuuming them. We'll just have to add vacuuming the bugs to our morning routine. <laughs> As the Pinnacle Bank Championship rolls into Saturday, the event is firing on all cylinders. The play on the web.com tour is hitting incredible highs, and so is the fan experience. But the staff is hitting a wall. Many are going on 14 plus days with a minimal amount of time dedicated to the only thing they love more than golf, their family. So when I got um, to work today, as my husband had snuck in a little book that he had made that had pictures and that he put, good luck at tournament mommy. And my son is six months old. So to see some pictures of Harry were really neat. And just the different, you know, funny faces that he makes and my husband and our dog too. The other night I got home and he was sleeping. So I didn't get to see him and he was fussing during the night. So when I went in to see what the problem was, and cuddle him. He got so happy to see me. It was so cute. I would say that's the hardest part of the gig because you don't see him at all. I'm home there in bed and I leave in the morning and they're still sleeping. And it's summer 
so they're having fun without me. It, it's been really rough, you know, missing him and, and coming home and he's asleep and leaving when he's asleep. We've got a four month old, that's the hardest because she, there's no way to explain to her why I'm gone and maybe she doesn't really realize it, maybe she does. I don't know what a four month old can, can recognize or not, but you know, these are times where you want to be around them and hold them and play with them and kind of build that initial bond. So that's been a little bit of a challenge, but a week from now I'll be home and we'll be good. So. I hope that when they come out and see what I'm doing that they can appreciate at least part of the reason why I'm not home and that it's some, that I'm doing something, that I'm building something, that I'm creating something that they can see and they can enjoy it. They can see other people out here enjoying it too. But that's absolutely the hardest part. You don't see it at all. Today is Championship Sunday. I just want to make sure we have enough grounds because if somebody comes in with just a corporate hospitality, I want to make sure that we can give them a grounds and have it scanned. Love it. By the end of the day, the Omaha return of the web.com tour will be completed. Final ticket sales will be tabulated. Charity funds will be donated, and the first ever winner of the Pinnacle Bank Championship will be crowned. Championship Sunday is always a little bittersweet. You're always excited going into it, seeing the golfers and watching the game and seeing you know, how many strokes with the differences between the leaders on the board, which is great. You always want to have a really tight finish. You always want people to be staying until the end. Good afternoon. Welcome to the final round of the 2017 Pinnacle Bank Championship at the Club at Indian Creek. This is our 110 tee time. Playing first. From God's country, Mr. Scott Gucheski. I think that having Scott Gucheski in that second to last group is going to be a lot of fun. I think you're going to see a lot of competition in those last five groups. Competition may be heating up as Sunday afternoon marches on, but don't be surprised if many staff members from the Pinnacle Bank Championship the web.com tour don't get to see it. So Sunday is always a really interesting day because play is still going on, but at the same time you're planning on backing out of course. The tour is out of here tonight. You know, they pack up the scoring truck and, the, and they leave. You start to plan, okay, what time can you start to follow the last group and making sure that we're not getting in the way of spectators so it's not like we're rushing them out of the house after a party, but we still need to get some semblance of order. Then we can probably like, Tetris them a yeah. little bit without having to take them apart. We're almost to the end. Yeah, what, five hours? Five hours, you think? We got guys that, you know, they're following that last group with hoses and they're going to cool down any hot spots on the greens. And then I'll start driving fairways and just checking. Uh, basically, I want to cool stuff down so that I can enjoy the finish of the tournament. And then we'll run back out there and turn the irrigation on and let the place water. So we're right now, we're good. My husband even called, he was on 17. He said, why do I see my truck right now pulling a trailer? So we had to call Ben and tell him to slow down a little bit because he was ready to tear that down. The biggest priority for us is to make sure that the volunteers that are there get to experience that and that you know our 15th club members and our board members get to experience that and our interns get to experience that. So, you know, it's on us to make sure everybody else's experience is spectacular. Am I crazy to wish it was still had like two more days? Yes, you're out of your mind. Like right now. Like, like Well, yeah, like cause it, two more but days. two more days of this, not two more days of two days ago. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> two more Saturdays or two more Sundays. 
So the, the most exciting part of the whole tournament is the last two holes, when you have the last final groups coming through, the leader groups. And your leader from Longwood, Florida, Sam Ryder. With the final groups of golfers coming into 16, 17, 18, it looks like Sam Ryder is gonna be our champion. So as they're coming down from 17 to 18, you wanna make sure that everybody can see the final putt drop. We never thought that anyone would win by this many strokes. I'm pretty excited for Sam. His mom, she found out he was leading yesterday. She flew in to see him today, so we're going to get to share that Kodak moment with them. Did he not know she was coming? See, I don't even see, this is the joke about all of it. Like, there's that happens. I mean, there, we have conversations like that on the daily in the office. I, she has no idea and I have no idea, no clue. All right, Sid, if you'll do the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Pinnacle Bank champion, Sam Ryder. Having that chance to sit down with our staff and just take in a minute and breathe a sigh of relief. It's always really cool to be on the green and look at the crowd and the gallery. It's a huge relief. You know, we've got the first year under our belts. I love my job. This is fun. It's, it's cool and, and unique in that you get to work in golf and work in sport, but you're also still benefiting a children's charity, which is very, very cool that you get to touch so many lives and work with so many different people that are passionate about their job. Because we've all put work into it and they can take that time to really feel like they're in the moment as well with whoever it is that just won, you know, to be with the champion and be with the staff and be on the, on the green. I think my biggest takeaway from this is that we totally did it. Yeah. So Alexis, Gary, and I never met each other before this. We, we all sat down with Mike, we had dinner together, and that was the first time we met. I mean, you're, you're sharing a 10 by 10 office with a person that, you know, six months ago you didn't even know. And it, it's super fun, and I know her coffee order, she knows mine. You know, to work with Jessica and Alexis, and then, you know, here's the, the federally mandated senior citizen. I'm a, now that I'm a Medicare card carrying member. What would you say if I told you I was carrying the tent down, and raising it four feet. You are a queen of magic. Oh, stop it. You are a magic queen. You are a All right, all right. They don't call me pops or grandpa. We just get along and have a lot of fun. I mean, look what we're doing. You know, we're putting on a golf tournament. You really bond and sometimes you're delusional because you don't have a lot of sleep or you're sitting over trash can eating your lunch because it's it's been a while and your food is pretty cold but you're hungry and you're going to eat it anyways. I think Jessica has really built trust with the two of them and I built that loyalty probably more than I have. I think she just is a great leader for someone as young as she is. But again, all three of them are talented. All three of them are good people. And all three of them have unique experiences that are very, very key to doing this job. At least a couple times a week, Alexis and Jessica, whoever leaves the office first and we're leaving, always say, thanks for letting me be on the team. We always say thanks for being part of the team. So we're very lucky that we're our own little family and we always joke the interns are our kids and we're taking care of them and trying to see where the kids are and what they're doing. And Jim Nedro has been a phenomenal uh, partner to have with us. We're so lucky that the club at Indian Creek has him as a superintendent and just the, the work that he and his team put in. You know, I heard one of the rules officials say that this this is like a master's. You know, it's funny because so often people will be like, that's a year-long job? Like, you do that all year round? And Jess and I's faces are always like deadpan because of course it's year round. I mean, from Gary's already selling 
for next year. I mean, the guy is already talking to sponsors as they're leaving their tents, making sure that they were happy and that they had what they needed. And it's just having that chance to enjoy it and, and pat each other on the back, and I think realize what we just did, and it takes a long time for some of that to sink in. And, and honestly, sometimes until you see those pictures, you realize, okay, that really happened, we made it, and this is how we can do better. You realize when we watch this that we're gonna like... Look like idiots? Well, totally. no, we're gonna be like, now I know why everyone said we look tired. <laughs>